Hey everybody, I'm Delilah Taylor and this is Happy Hour Hangout. I hope y'all are ready. This is the biggest panel we've ever had on this show and the first time of an all-ladies show. We've already been giggling in the room, so getting ready. Cheers to everybody. Yay. Yes. Cheers. It is white wine night. A few things before we get started. Next week's show... To let you know, is also the night of my youngest baby's high school graduation. Oh, yeah! So, congratulations! Yeah, so there won't be a show next Thursday. I'm sorry. I love my darlings, but I love her more. So, <laughs> <laughs> but do not worry. There will be a happy hour hangout the following Thursday. But I have a special surprise for everybody starting next Saturday, May 24th. I'm going to start something new. I'm going to do a live shopping event. Ooh, yes. Yeah. It's going to run on Saturdays. It's a small biz Saturday. I've, already, I've spent the entire day already talking with a number of different people. I mean, just losing my mind with all the people that I'm getting lined up to set up for this event. And it will start at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Still getting the rest of the details set up, but everybody will find out about it soon. Now, I know you're all waiting to hear it from these lovely ladies. So we will start off from my end of the panel. If everybody would introduce yourself and tell us what you're drinking. We'll start off with Gail. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am Gail Harris, and I am in the Boston area, and I am drinking Vintage Delo. Everybody's looking at me. Is is that like a Chardonnay or? I don't think I've heard. Stephanie, you want to tell them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are you drinking? Oh, she's <laughs> Vintage Delo. Is that what you're drinking? Vintage Delo. Yes, yeah, she's drinking water. Oh! was awesome. <laughs> that was called stump the panel moment. That is great. Uh, all right, Gail has a sense of humor. I like it. <laughs> Next, we're gonna go to Jessica. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Now I do think I need to follow Phil's advice. Like everybody's faces it. were just looking at me like, huh? <laughs> wow, never heard of that before. I like that. Mine is also non-alcoholic. It is a drink with no name, so we could name this drink today. It's a little bit of mint, some mulled strawberries, some apricot juice with LaCroix pour poured in. I suppose you could do it with club soda, too. But I have LaCroix handy, so that's what I'm drinking tonight. What's LaCroix? It's a bubbly water. Also agua. Mm. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Y'all can tell I drink a lot of water, right? <laughs> Maybe it's called tap water, right? Me too. Yeah, but Jessica, I love your cup. Show us your oh, cup. Thanks. Yeah, it was hand. It was handmade. I got it on Woodby Island, uh, which is a little island right over here in the San Juans, right, like right over there, not in my backyard, but in the San Juan <laughs> Islands in our neck of the woods. And they actually have this huge glass blowing firehouse that they call it firehouse glass. And you can watch them make all of the stuff that they've got. And so I snagged a couple of glasses and brought them home. Very fun. That's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I like it. Pretty. All right. Next up is Maggie. Hi. I'm okay, so I'm joining you. I'm drinking something called Fadeway. Uh, okay, so I just came back from the Central Coast, as you guys know. So Santa Maria Valley is what, what sold me on this wine. Uh, I got it from Trader Joe's, and I guess it's an exclusive to Trader Joe's. Uh, so far, so good, I guess. I've had better Chardonnay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, Fadeway. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm a wine blogger. What can I say? But anyways. All right. Cheers. Oh, uh, Cheers. Let's get my foot out of my mouth here. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, honey, and we are up to you. Mm. You like that? I was like, what, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a bartender. I always catch you with your mouth full, baby. <laughs> I think uh, I, I need to go out to California, and Chef and I needed to do just the booze part with Maggie. 
I think that would be a complete well, shit show. <laughs> you know, she, no, Chef's coming. You're t Chef is coming when? In October, I want to say? Oh, I'm coming I say, too. I say oh, we're going, going to ShiftCon. Are you going to ShiftCon? No, to, to, not ShiftCon. He's coming. He's just he's coming in okay. October sometime. Well, we'll and talk. I'm going to get my happy self out there too. But then you can't make fun of me because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a trailer park girl. I've got my lovely... <laughs> Rex Goliath, which really attracted me to it simply based on the fact that it's got a, a real live 47 pound rooster on it, which I guess did exist like a hundred years ago. His Royal Majesty Rex Goliath. So cheers to that. Mama loves her Chardonnay. Hey. Cheers. Ooh. Mm. All right, Stephanie. Okay, and so now we may get to visit my entire family because my daughter's just come and told me that she needs homework and she doesn't understand I'm on TV. So. <laughs> so, let's, let's drink fast. Maybe it'll go quickly. <laughs> You're handling it beautifully, darling. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so who am I? I don't remember. I'm Stephanie Sims, and uh, I'm actually in Scottsdale, Arizona. And tonight I am drinking a Gruet, which is a sparkling wine. You cannot call something champagne if it's not from France. But because this one tasted, I'm, I'm kind of with you tonight, Maggie. I'm a little disappointed. This bottle must have been old. It tasted off, so I turned it, mm. it into a. I turned it into a mimosa. Oh, I like to call those momos. Uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Momos. The momos. So cheer, everyone. Cheers. 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 Mm. Oh, I forgot Cheers. this. Video. I am drinking Moscato, something yeah. named Menage a Trois. Oh, very Ooh. nice. Ooh. And that's about yeah. as French as I get. I just said menage a trois. And it's actually really, really good, but I will never buy it again because I about couldn't open it. Okay. <laughs> I, have one those, I have an electric corkscrew. I drank so much wine, I have an electric corkscrew. And the, 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 cork, the cork in this thing was so long that even my electric corkscrew wouldn't work. I had to like hand crank it. And then I was, then I set it on the floor. It was like, what? Was like, it was this awesome. has so many innuendos to it. It's insane. <laughs> it's long. I had to get it on the floor. Yeah. My, my husband would have been jealous of the corkscrew. He wouldn't. Still I I hope that this is the worst problem you ever have in your life. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I like your big size queen glass. <laughs> this? Uh, yeah, honey, I, I bought it at the Dollar Tree. Oh, wait till you get the Bat Crap <laughs> Crazy glass. Because I don't know if it's as big as your Dollar Tree glass, though. But This thing is my, huge. It yeah. is. That's big, I, Carl. I, I, I'm cheap. I, well, not. Well. I, buy right. some cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was like a twelve dollar bottle of wine and a one dollar glass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stephanie is our numbers girl. She will agree. It's probably it's that's frugal purchase, right, Stephanie? That, yes, and that's what that's Delilah and I were talking about this before, and I was telling her that's um, the reason. It's not that I don't like good stuff. Okay, let's mm -hmm. be realistic here. But when you drink a lot, not that I drink a lot, but you know. If you're going to buy more than one bottle at a time, you're going to buy more than one bottle at a time. You got to think about that. And so, yes, I agree. You know, if you can get something that tastes good for twelve sure. bucks, I'm all over it. You know how we should gauge everybody's drinking is how loud are recycling sounds when we go out? Is it clang, 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 clang? Oh man. Uh, well, see, I'm going to be thrown right out of that. Oh, girlfriend is not recycle. I live oh, in a very I, rural area. That's okay. So we recycle, but we like crush our own cans and have to haul them into another county. Right, because then there's <laughs> the gas to get there. But no, and girlfriend, you can offset I mean, your carbon footprint. We'll recycle for you. How's that? Oh, right. oh no, no, you you haven't even heard. It it gets even worse. Oh. <laughs> we don't even have <laughs> we do, we don't even have garbage service here. Mm. We have to haul our own garbage. We haul it all the way up the mountain to the dump where they already have the crusher there. Right. <laughs> and everything that is actually burnable, we get fire permits for and mm -hmm. burn in the five gallon can out in the front yard. Girlfriend is country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. We like to call it remote. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. My, we my sounds like, so. sounds like a simpler way of life. A it bit. does. Yeah. I kind of like it. I think I like always, too. We recycle enough stuff. We actually turned our trash compactor into our recycling bin, and we have a different 
place for our trash because it's three times as much recycled as it is to what we actually throw away now. Girl, wow. and, 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 and we can it, still fill up our recycle bin, and there's only three of us. I'm like, wow, we're doing an okay job, I guess. That's not bad. Is your carbon footprint like these big? Uh, no. These these big. That's not bad. if you count. I suppose yes, because all of our electric our, all of our electricity comes from water, and so it doesn't come from coal like in the Midwest. It um, for real? Yeah, for hydro? hydro. We use. Lots of hydro out here. Puget Sound Energy uses a ton of hydro, and they're starting to get into it. I know, isn't that great? Hey, girl. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. All right, y'all, time for a few shout-outs. <laughs> Welcome, Les. I don't hey, think Les. I've ever had Les here before. I think so. Oh, we love forward. Les Dosh. Yes. Yeah, hi, Les. Yes. We're bringing in the big guns. <laughs> and of course, there's Joe Ray. Hi, Joe Ray. Oh, I, I was just in your hood. Ray. And Phil. I love Phil. He <laughs> says, hello, Gail. Miss Fancy Pants and her fancy water. How awesome is that? Phil, this one's for you. This one's for you, yes. Phil. Yes. Super Phil, cute. maybe have you got your uh, mason jar of vodka? <laughs> yep. There it is. If and it will Phil's be organic, by the way. It will oh, be. Yeah. yeah. He, he was on my first show drinking his uh, mm -hmm. his mason jar full of vodka. It was awesome. Mm. <laughs> Best way to drink <laughs> vodka. <laughs> oh, Best way to drink anything is out of a mason jar. Amen. And, and everybody mm. loves it. Doesn't it just take you back to a kid when you see mason jars? You're just like, I'll drink anything out of it. Hey, yeah. Mason jars and pickle jars. I have pickle jars up here. Oh, so. I like that too. Yeah. And Mark, let's see what we got For here. Yes, it will be a lively conversation to say the least. Have fun. Hey. All I right. I wonder if Nazim is out in the audience because I feel like I've been tracking Nazim all day. No, he was on my show last week. Mm -hmm. and, uh, God bless him. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I watched it. Like, yeah. Megan, you know what we're going to say as so we go, oh, bless him. Yeah, as country girls, when we say, God bless him, you know, you know it's bad. Brother Man, <laughs> Brother Man has a lot of hours ahead of us, though, so we got to give him. We gotta oh, give yeah, him I mean, he stayed up till like 1 in the morning. He smuggled ice from the bar in front of his office. Oh, bless and him. He was drinking, and bless his heart, he, he mm. got drunk and passed out in his office on his desk, and his wife had to wake him up like that. Next morning, it was, <laughs> it was I talked to him after your show because I can't remember what I had last Thursday, but I came in after it. I think I had another show, and and uh, I was getting loaded with Nazim online. It was pretty fun. That's right, he told me about that. And after he got off with you, then he went back and was talking more with Wade. He was up till like five a.m. <laughs> getting drunk. Just call him all his U.S. friends. Yeah. <laughs> Who's in California I can talk to that's still awake? Yeah. <laughs> he, he still had ice left, you know? <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, so. my goodness. Yeah. Uh, Maggie, before the show, you were telling us about the fires. Can you... Mm -hmm. Tell us yeah, more about that. It's really hot <laughs> here in San Diego. I have nothing to do with it. It's um, Look how glowy girlfriend looks, though. Look how hot she looks even when she's hot. Are you kidding me? I'm, like, sweating and glowing. And it's like, oh. yeah. Is that, yeah, I is that from yeah, temperature so now or is that coming from the fire? It, well, no, this is just the temperature right now. It's like 90, 100, I don't know. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's hot. It's, it's, wow. hot. it's just really hot. But we've had a lot of fires in San Diego. Um, we have fires going on right now. Oh, it's it's just scary, you know. And I live in on Coronado Island where it's, you know, a lot of military. So I'm used to seeing the helicopters. But the helicopters are going in different directions now. And ooh, we had this big super tanker too, uh, this massive plane with I don't know if it's water or some kind of a retardant. I don't know exactly what it is, but it went over the fires and yeah, just dropped a bunch of water stuff on it. And it's just it's yeah, it's kind of sad right now. So I definitely need a glass of wine. Oh, <laughs> I was telling you guys about the evacuation. My son was evacuated. He thought it was so cool. <laughs> You know, here's a six-year-old being evacuated from school, and he's like, yeah, Mommy, and I saw the fire next to my school, and, oh my and I'm, like, heart beating, going, where's my child? <laughs> you know? It was just, yeah. Whoa. It's not a, uh, not a fun experience as a mother, but. 
Does he go to school over on, well, I guess you would say the mainland, maybe? Yeah, he's in San Diego. He goes to school in San Diego. Um, so I drive into San Diego quite a bit. Um, and so, But when I'm in Coronado, we're on a bicycle. Not today. Today's just nuts. Nobody's on a bicycle. Everyone's at the beach. We were actually just on the beach. That's why I have, like, sand on me right now. <laughs> and so, but, yeah, there's um, uh, usually around here, how people get around is just, you know, your bike around or boat. You take a boat somewhere. <laughs> I saw a bicycle on a boat. That was so cool. So, is there like a bridge or something? Do you drive him back and forth every day? Is that yeah. how that? Yeah. Well, I have. Uh, I share custody with my ex-husband. And my oh, husband, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he has them three and a half days out of the week, and I have them the other three and a half days. So the other three and a half days, it's like I'm here. I'm in front of my computer. I'm, I'm happy. Not not having to deal with San Diego traffic or you know, yeah, but or, or fires is. in San Diego. But oh, but you could see them. We crossed the bridge today because it had something to do with the mainland. And when you're crossing the Coronado Bridge, you had all these fires all over the place. It was just, uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of sad. But uh, and I was gonna say, I I don't remember. I mean, I hear about Cal about L. A. But I haven't heard that often of San Diego getting them. Is that is that kind of unusual for you guys? Yeah, in 2007, that was our big one. And then we had another one like in 2003. Um, mm -hmm. It happens more here than L.A. because L.A. is just industrial. You don't really have, um, you know, the the hills and the valleys like you do here. Around here, you have people who have, like, ranches and vineyards, uh, you know, uh, so it's a little bit different um, here. Uh, L.A. is just population, you know, overload city and building. So if you have a fire, you know, you can take it out pretty quickly. But if you have just massive acres of just... You know, yeah. You know, to, to burn, that's different. So, wait, we had it last year. Um, well, last year was a flood, which was just unbelievable. You were talking before in the green room about keeping up, keeping up on Twitter, and that's how I knew it was so bad here. I don't know if you guys remember hearing about that in Colorado, but I mean, it was yeah. just insane in last September. And you're kind of like, you know, there's that point where you're like, oh, it's not really me or you hear the, the little bit of a chatter and then you get on Twitter or on you know for me it was at Facebook at the time but um and it, you just want oh they ain't playing <laughs> like this is this is really serious and then the year before were our terrible fire so it's very similar to what you guys went through and it was kind of dotted everywhere too too and there's a ton of stuff to burn a ton of ton of trees in the mountains so I, I didn't know you sister got wildfires like that. Girlfriend, I'll tell you, that's our only thing. Like, it's such an amazing state. There's very few bugs. We don't really have any the tornadoes we don't get. We don't get hurricanes. We don't get earthquakes. But I'll tell you, when we get, we got some biblical stuff. <laughs> I was like, well, see, here in 2011, and it, it was so strange. I mean, Tennessee might get a tornado every now and then. Usually our biggest thing was either ice storms or mm -hmm. thunderstorms. But in 2011, there was a rampage of tornadoes that ran straight through Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. And at the time, I was still working full-time as a paramedic on the ambulance. I worked 24 straight hours that day. Oh, you're had, badass. You are we, badass. we had 27 Damn. tornadoes ripped through that day. I mean, it, Ooh, it looked like wow. a wow. war-torn city. And it, it just struck me because you were talking about Facebook. And at the time, I was still very strong on Facebook, and and I'd spent 24 hours. I actually drove through a tornado. I was pulling people out of falling down houses. Wow. I was walking through ditches. I mean, I was just soaking muddy, wet, blood covered. I mean, it was it was just bad. But um, Ooh. within days after that, there were so many people on Facebook, and they were complaining about their power being out. And I went through like this this three mile long Facebook post griping at all these people about oh, I don't care about how your your power's oh. out. Quit worrying about it being out for a week. There's all these people that have no homes left. How dare you? I was right. Like, yes. No. Well, I bet the bitch love came out. Wow. <laughs> oh, 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 the red hair was flaming. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> like, well, like right here, right now, we have so many people who are evacuated. Well, like my son, he was evacuated from school. He went over to the high school. And his little friends and people we know, I know so many people right now who are evacuated from their million-dollar homes. Someone, I, I know someone who just bought a $700,000 home. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful home. He was evacuated and it went down into, 
absolutely no. nothing. Yeah, you know what? What's wrong with this picture? You know, it's like it's crazy what's going on. And you said, Maggie, that they don't know what caused these, right? No, and I really hope it's not foul play because you have to think about San Diego County is pretty large. I mean, we have a pretty large state, and we have random spots where, mm. um, yeah, it's. I hate to think that it's foul play. I hate to think that. I really do. Oh, ours was, and it was really sad. By the way, I love the fact I don't have to hide my boozing on this hangout. <laughs> yeah, no. No, the, the, the boozing is like, open. I'm like the biggest booze hag right now. Now I'm like, oh, so anyway. <laughs> Here's my wine. Watch me drink it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Kansas, they burn the prairies in the fall. So at the end of the year when they right. um, are done with everything to get it ready. And that is the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen in my life. And I don't know, you know, I don't know if it makes sense or if there's an opportunity for some sort of controlled burning to help burn. avoid yeah. evacuations or if that's, you know, if there's some reason that that's not a viable solution. Mm. We yeah, had to do it here because we had pine, uh, the pine beetle in the mountains yeah. and I've never seen anything like it like when you drive from Denver and you can see where the pine beetle is making his way through um, the mountains and I would I did a lot of work in Snowmass and Aspen and so mm -hmm. I would drive and you would get to like about halfway there and then it would kind of clear out but boy it, it, you would see these be all these beautiful pines and then brown 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 and it was this beetle that had, had yeah. kind of eaten it from the inside out and it's very hard I mean if you thin that out there'd be nothing so but the controlled burn is an interesting concept for sure well, what you I was just talking to uh, a friend of mine um, who his dad was out there, and I can understand. He's lived in this house for 20 years. He was up on his roof, and firemen were telling him, you need to get down from your house, and he's out there with a, his water hose trying to just, I, I mean, I understand. You've lived in your house for 20 years. You want to save what you can, but at one point, you really can't do much more than just that. And his house was safe, thank God, but I mean, I, I don't even want to imagine. Delilah, did you go through that of like people having being stubborn? Because there was a lot, there was a, a good number of people that were killed here because of the, what Maggie was talking about. They're just, it's so hard, you know. I, I I would feel that way about evacuating my pets if I couldn't. I'd be like, I'm gotta stay with them. So it's a tough one. Well, with here and the tornadoes and it being so rare and random, there was nowhere to evacuate anybody to. Eh, true. And it's fast. Right, the tornadoes would hit before anybody could get anywhere. Now they did. There were various spots set up around um, the different cities, um, churches, uh, concrete buildings, things like that, where where people were told that they could go to, but a lot of them didn't go, and we just didn't have the resources to go and check all the houses beforehand to get them there. And by the time we got to the houses, it was they were already gone. Yeah. So there really wasn't a thing for that, unfortunately. And there was no no pre warning or not enough warning to let them know that, that this was coming. I mean, once we knew that a tornado was about to hit somewhere, it was only within a matter of minutes. So it, Ooh, there really wasn't time wow. to do it. Has, has anybody been through one, by the way? Have have you like actually seen it? Oh, I drove through one. Oh, I've never driven through wow. one. <laughs> but yeah, I'm wow. in the sky. Girl, I'd have a heart attack. Oh. Well, it, I was in the ambulance, and it was it was weird. They were striking all over the place during that day. Yeah. And it was so strange because uh, the sky got this weird green. i never mm -hmm. seen the sky green. And then the next thing I know, there's like hail this big smacking mm -hmm. the windshield. And I wow. thought it was going to turn the Ooh. truck over. And, yeah. and, and you know, that, those green that was something an F-Zero. Or like an yeah. F one, mm -hmm. but it was terrifying. I yeah. call those clouds um, baby butt clouds. I mean, they're like green. The, besides being green, like you know what? It's also they are actually little shaped like little baby butts. It's like they're they hanging are. out of the sky, and those are the ones. No matter where you're at, that's going to be a storm of a, of a good kind. That's very Midwest. Weather I grew up in Illinois, so oof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was it was creepy. Mm-hmm. Oh, I bet. <laughs> mm. You're, oh, that's an amazing story, Delilah. That's no, a really bueno. story. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, movie, movie quality. Yeah. 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 Well, it, what makes it so strange was like three weeks later, we went on vacation. We, we got managed to get all of our children together at once and went to Universal Studios in Florida. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was the first time we had all been there, and they actually have a, a I know twister. Where you're <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the twister simulation. Uh, stupid me! I got on this thing <laughs> in this room. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. First time I had ever had a panic attack in my life. I went out of this thing crying. I mean, I sat. And cried for ten minutes, just absolutely boohooing. And my husband and my kids are like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "It's PSTD. I'll be fine." <laughs> ten minutes oh, later, I was girlfriend. good, you know. And we went on the next ride. <laughs> <laughs> they quit crying. Yeah. She's over it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, don't ever do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just mm -hmm. reading you. Oh my goodness! No, I, I, I was, I've thought about that. I was somebody. Uh, oh, Randy, do you know Randy Hilarski and, and Annabelle? Randy and Annabelle down in Panama, and they just posted they were in uh, Costa Rica and they went through a, a, a um, earthquake. And I was like, I would come unglued. Put that adult diaper on me. I would lose <laughs> my mind. They're like you might want to check yourself. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gail, where do you live at? I live in the Boston area. I live about um, 20 minutes west of Boston when there's when it's not rush hour in a town oh. called a town called Framingham. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful little spot. You know what's, it? What? Yeah, I lived in New York, uh, New York City for a long time. What? Um, what's the mountain? The mountains there. The mountains. Well, kind of like in isn't Massachusetts? You've got like a little. I'm th you know what I'm thinking? I'm, I'm thinking oh, of the side. The, the Berkshires, Berkshires. yeah. You're yeah. Like, what mountains? What yeah, mountains that's, are here? Not really, that's not really near Boston. But I actually mm -hmm. grew up in New York City. I've just, mm -hmm. you know, I've been here for did several years. Where did you live in the city? I lived at 92nd and 2nd for a long time. Uh, and oh. back then, 96 was that demarcation line when it got a little cray cray. Um, yeah, I lived. I lived uh, in 81st and 3rd, so we were kind of. Oh, neighbors. we were. Like, is that? Oh, is that? Um, is that? Kip a long time ago. It was like another lifetime. Is it Kips Bay or Turtle? But you know, they had those little, little names for the neighborhoods, which I love. So there's a little name name for it up there. But yeah, I loved. I loved my little my little hood. Now I'm in Colorado, but I moved from New York City to Boulder. Talk about a culture shock. Woo. Oh, They're yeah. like, what is wrong with that girl? <laughs> <laughs> she walks fast. She talks fast. This area is really historical, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Before I lived in Framingham, I lived in Lexington. You know, and that's where Paul Revere rode yeah. down. You know, the British yeah. are coming. The British are coming. Yeah. So we actually right, you know, like a couple of miles from our house was Paul Revere's trail where he actually, you know, went there. And there's the Minutemen Park. and Sure. I, yeah, it's like all that stuff that I learned about when I was in elementary school, and I wasn't living yeah. here at the time. I was living in New York, and it's just, it's really, it's really neat. It's really mm -hmm. neat. It's yeah. super it's rich in history, history, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Hey, did any of you guys get to see the link that I sent you earlier? Sorry, no. Mm -hmm. I didn't. No. No, I, no. I did. I, I did, did, and I was outraged. Me too. I, I was. Oh, I, was I was. I figured this would be the great thing for a ladies' night. I mean, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll give you all the rundown. Seven. I, I love doing trendy topics, and this one is like busting the web everywhere. Oh boy. Okay. All right. I, I told you my daughter is graduating high school here next week, mm -hmm. and everybody just had prom recently. Mm-hmm. This story is a 17-year-old girl. She's tall. She's lanky. She's like five foot nine. Mm -hmm. She finds this beautiful silver sparkly dress. It's it's very simple. It's just very sequined. Yeah. It's not very low cut. Mm -hmm. um, when she puts it on, it's um, cocktail style, but it's not too short. It, it, the the one rule the school had was that it had to come past your fingertips. The length of the dress had to come past your fingertips, and it did on her. So her and her boyfriend, and they have like five or six other people riding with them, mm -hmm. get to the prom. Well, where the town is this, by the way? Where, where is this at? Um, shoot, i got to look it up. Stephanie, do you remember? Because mm -hmm. that always makes a difference on what kind of cray-cray is going on. Well, right? and it's, the interesting thing, what I really found interesting about this, I'll look up the town for you, Delia, but what was super interesting is that it was... Um, 
it was a homeschooling prom. So it yeah. wasn't like your typical high school prom, right? Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, everybody's in the cool, popular group. It was supposed to be these parents who were interested, you know, in raising their kids differently. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so so open-minded. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So her and her boyfriend and all their friends are going through the front door, and she's a she's a tall girl, and uh, as she's going through the front door, one of the the female chaperones at the front door stops her and tells her that her dress is too short. Well, she holds her arms down to her side, shows that this dress comes past her fingertips, and the lady is looking at her and telling her it's still too short, being very rude to her, and mm. telling her, well, okay, I'll let you through. But you need to make sure that that stays pulled down. They're there about 15 minutes. They're standing by the the food, and her and her friends, you know, are just kind of swaying to the music, talking, chit chatting, this, that, and the other. And the female, one of the female chaperones, comes back up to her, pulls her off to the side, and tells her that they're going to have to leave because her dress is too short. And it's causing impure thoughts in the dads that are chaperoning. The problem. Oh, I, would, I would punch somebody in the head. How about my empire oh, thought I'm punching you in the head? Oh, yeah. tell me about it. Right? And it was causing it trouble. Yeah. Wait, did she leave? What did the parents say? Yeah. No, they left. Yeah. They left. It was actually two tears, and there were dads up overhead of them. And her and her friends had noticed the dads were like hanging over the rails looking at her. And, um, you know, they, they were kind of creeped out by it, but didn't think much of it. You know, and it was just the girls standing in a group. Her, her boyfriend wasn't even with her. They were just standing there. And um, one or two of the other chaperones complained. They said that she was dancing provocatively. Oh, so, oh my God. Yeah. Okay, when, it's Richmond, Virginia. That's, that's where it yeah. was. It's well, been, there you have it. And <laughs> when, when this lady pulled her aside, one of her friends came over and was like, what is going on? And so what wound up happening was they tell this girl that she's going to get kicked out of the prom. Her boyfriend winds up coming over. They wind up telling him that he's going to get kicked out of the prom. Christ all, on a cracker. Let me do a yeah. Christ on a cracker. Just, and just out there. And since they? all these kids rode together, right, they're like, they all if we leave, all these people got to leave too. So now they're wanting money back for all these kids. And they're like, well, no, we'll give money back to you, but we're not giving them their prom ticket money back. And then they agree to it. But then once they send all these kids out the door, after only being at the prom for 15 minutes, only the one girl got her money back, and that's because the dads were getting horny. I like how the women have to take all the heat for this crap. Right? Is that not I, I don't rem I don't remember my dad being at my prom. <laughs> what a <if> dad <laughs> doing at this prom? Yeah. Just go <laughs> there. Right, like, what are you well, doing? Are you a weirdo? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't, didn't you pay your parents not to go to your prom? Didn't anybody else know that trick? I mean, come on. I, at, at the very, at the, at the worst case scenario, they dropped you off, which was embarrassing enough. Let alone we're in there just like hanging out and like scamming and it, like they're watching TV. What a weirdo. Yeah, it, but it, it just it made me so angry. Me too. Well, I you was know, like, we talk about. We, Wait, we talk about women just putting each other down all the time and not helping each other up, and this is a perfect example of if it's up to us to control the whole rest of the world, then we end up policing ourselves, and that right mm -hmm. there is a big problem because we're dumbing down our sexuality instead of embracing it and owning our feminine power. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it, what made it so bad was, I mean, it, okay, the girl is five foot nine. She's got some legs on her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but you take the same dress and put it on somebody who's me, like five foot two, and it wouldn't have made a difference. But because she's five foot nine, and I mean, she's seventeen, she's got some, some. She was cute. Some curves going on. Yeah. Like her sister's yeah, I mean, it, she was really cute. Yeah, they and had it pictures like a of really her. Cute dress. It's a very simple dress, other than it's yeah. just sparkly. There was nothing. <sighs> I just tremendous it's just, about it. Well, so how, was she, how was she dancing? If you're hearing that she's dancing provocatively, it doesn't matter what you've got on. <laughs> you yeah. know? If it, you're out there doing her and her friends thing. standing in one group together, you know, doing this thing by the food table. Their boyfriends weren't even there. But, they were. but do you guys notice that the, the thing that's the overarching theme is that she's responsible for right. something, first of all, she's not even doing, of right. their behavior? Yeah. yeah. Like, how infuriating is that? 
Like, it is, why should we have to dress differently because it's going to affect somebody else's emotions? That's right. going to mess, gonna mess why, people up. Why are actually we teaching everybody to hold back a little bit and control their own impulses? Right. What's, What's the thing that we, you know, we all say all the time is like, you know, what you're not. What is it, Marianne Williamson? You're not serving yourself by being small, right? We talk about the anti-message yeah, of right. like, you know, you, you're, you need to, mm, you need to tone down, tone it down, and you know, she's, she, she, uh, actually went with every rule that they asked for, and they're still giving her a hard time, and now she's responsible for a bunch of grown men's reaction to her, which is, can I swear on this, by the way? Absolutely. We don't have a sponsor, baby. Go for it. Fucking <laughs> bullshit. Okay, there you go. I really I went big. I went big. I'm going to throw down the mic now. What's been some of the commentary that's been going around? I'd be interested. Can I, can I, play, can I play devil's advocate here? Yeah, sure. go ahead. I just saw a bruise over here. Um, I get random bruises. It's really weird. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, how did I do this? Um, okay, so... Don't we kind of need a police, though? Let, let's let, let's ask that question. If if we don't have these regulations, then how far out there are we going to go? Here's the thing: she had regulations, and, and she, she was within them. them. Yeah, That's I think true. That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, I mean, I guess I guess the question for me, Maggie, is if you set up a system and you say to people, "This is what you're supposed to do." And then someone does that, and you say to them, uh, that's still not okay, because other people might misinterpret, or other people are, are looking at that and taking it the wrong way. Is, is that my problem, as the person who respected the rules? Or is it their role to control themselves and figure out, you know what, I'm a 40-year-old man, and that's a 17-year-old girl, and this isn't appropriate, but it's not her fault. I'm the adult here. <laughs> yeah. And you what know? are those dads teaching their sons? That's my problem. Right. That's my biggest problem. Where does that come in for the respect for women? Right. And the article, it's actually interesting, the article that you linked to, Delilah, it has mm -hmm. a quote from Think Progress where it says, ultimately that attitude teaches girls that it's their responsibility to prevent themselves from being ogled rather than teaching boys to have the self-control to refrain from objectifying their classmates. Absolutely. And that is the problem. If somebody wants to leer at me, I can react to that however I want, but I don't deserve that. You know, I that's can yell like, at them or I can do whatever, but... That's like telling a woman that, that she's going to be you. raped because of what she wore. And who's going to decide that what she wore should, was not appropriate for her body type? Right. And who can... I mean, that's, that's the real question is, you know, to me, the part that's really scary is this notion that you're teaching, you're reinforcing this role. Well, you're the woman. It's your responsibility to make sure people don't misinterpret you. Yeah. Well, well, why? Why can't they just control yeah. themselves? And even more important, what does that say about our unique awesomeness? What about the gifts that we have and being able to show up and be true in that? And we're being told we really can't. Not everybody's right. being told they can't. Only some of us are. And that is really probably the most stifling thing that can happen to any person anywhere. Did we lose Mia? We lost Mia. Yeah, I know. I just noticed that. I'm like, what happened to Mia? But, but just that it's interesting that you say that, but I guess my question is because... I don't want to generalize, but you know, I think women maybe because we feel this responsibility to sure. censor ourselves, and we see that other women are being censored. Maybe what really happens is we're like, you know, kind of like Mia said, we're toning down our own gifts, not because somebody's yes. actually telling us directly to, of but course. because we're saying, oh my gosh, she took a chance, and look what happened to her. Oof, I better be careful. Do you think this ever will change? Do you think this ever? I mean, do you think you'll ever turn around where the moms are out there? Checking out the little boys. <laughs> no, I mean, there's well, you, know, you know what? If I were her mom, I would have marched all the five of them all right back, and I would have been like, "They're going to the prom. They met your rules. Change the rules next year." I, I think at that point she was so dismayed, yeah, well, she was so heartbroken that yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, have I think it's too bad that. because that, I actually. It makes me wonder. I think it is a generational thing, too. How do we learn and how do we react based off of what we learn? And I think I and I know that myself, I am working really hard to change my reactions to some things because of the fact that I don't want them passed on to my child. 
and I don't want that type of thinking or self-limiting thought to be okay with anybody he chooses or the norm for somebody he chooses to bring into his life. So um, it, it is a little bit of self-ownership, I think, but it's also really hard in the day-to-day -day chaos of life and the craziness that comes with all of that. And then, of course, then you've got teenagers, and I don't know what a teenager is like. <laughs> um, you will. All right, I'm going to show a couple of comments from the audience real quick. All right, Kim Boltman. They, that story also disrespect the girl's mom who likely approved her daughter's attire prior to the oh, homeschooling event. Really yeah. Point. And, and uh, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Very good point. I, I'm like, where did Mia go? Did she have somewhere else to go? She had something else to do. I thought she did too. Oh, she had to take off for a networking thing, didn't she? Oh yeah, maybe maybe that was it. But I'm like, yeah. That's weird. Okay. Oh, Zara. Oh, that rape scenario happened to me in 1964. Police assumed that I was being provocative. Suspect went crazy and shot people on the street two weeks later. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is this is awful. But it, it just it, now this girl is getting a ton of support. Her sister actually okay. has a blog. And, wow. and I mean, it's went all over the news. It's went blog crazy. It's went all over the internet. But it's like, it's it's horrible that this this would happen in today's society. You wouldn't think that we would be so petty at this point. I mean, seriously. Well, it just shows there's still a lot of work that has to be done in our society. Attitudes just have to change. You know, Jessica kind of reminds me of the conversation that you had on your show a couple of weeks back. You know which one I'm talking about with um, who was the author, the guy you oh, had Chris online. Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. It just it reminds me of that conversation a little bit about how we have to really women, you know, who we are. We have to stand up for ourselves and where you know where are men in all of this? What are men learning? You know what where what are we teaching our what are we teaching our boys? It's it's so. Um, it's just so infuriating, you know. It's like where do where do you begin? But that's the thing. You have to begin at home. You really do. Yeah. You have to begin with Carter. I have to begin with Lucas. That's we right. all have to just. What else can we do? I mean, we're not going to go mm -hmm. march in a picket line. So really, like really, this this awful thing happened, you know. And it's like, oh, you know, it makes me so mad. So, what is each one of us as an individual? What do we do about it? Well, here, here's another thought that I had. I, I don't know. Y'all, yeah, I love the Today Show. I pull a lot of my stuff from the Today Show. And they were talking about the other day, uh, Monica Lewinsky. God knows everybody remembers Monica Lewinsky. Of course. And that whole scandal is named the Monica Lewinsky scandal, right? <laughs> right. But who did something wrong? Why I'm is sure. it not named the Bill Clinton Scam. Of course, it's the perfect exactly. right. It's exactly the same thing. That's the point. Right. Yeah. I mean, because she's she's coming out with a book or something, re-releasing her story. I mean, she's doing something. Everybody's like, well, why is she still talking about this? Yada yada. That woman can't get a job. She can't hold a job. She can't do anything because everybody keeps going back to this right. thing that she did when she was 21 years old with a president. But it, it's named after her. Right. Nobody ever associates it with Bill I mean quintessential that is right there that's exactly what we're talking about yeah and, and you know what's so sad was it never even dawned on me either that I was doing that and, and I'll take responsibility for that I was doing that myself until it was brought up by one of the news announcers well why don't we call it the Bill Clinton scandal and I thought about it and I was like why don't I that's wrong of me I, I did that and I need to take responsibility for that because he was just as involved as she was. And, and if we do call it that, the, I mean, everybody will know exactly what we're talking about. I'm totally changing this now. <laughs> From now Maybe. on, it will be the Bill, scand Bill, Bill Clinton scandal. Oh, Mia. Mia. There she <laughs> is. Color me so incredibly annoyed right now. <laughs> my, my neighbor knocked out our, our internet. Oh, my. Oh. Okay. I've been out there what? giving him the business, and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? And then uh, he's already, he's already you want to know, it's, it's like if they called it the Bill Clinton scandal, everybody would just laugh at it. 
<laughs> you know, the, oh, poo poo it, right? But yeah. that's Monica Lewinsky scandal. Then it's like, oh, you know, she's, I, mean, I'm, she's I missed the devil's advocate part, too. So. Uh, okay, oh, what yeah, we were sorry. talking about was. Um, I was watching the Today Show the other day, mm -hmm. and it, you know we're discussing all the how women shouldn't be responsible for men's thoughts or actions on how we dress or act. Mm -hmm. well, Monica Lewinsky is releasing her story again. Mm -hmm. because, I mean, it, she can't get a job. I mean, she's been told by people I think that she won't be had hired. A dumb on that one time, right? <laughs> and and they were talking about on the Today Show, and 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 people were saying. Well, why don't we call it the Bill Clinton scandal instead of the Monica Lewinsky scandal? We're dumping it all on her name and leaving him completely out of it. The man is getting left completely out of it again. Yeah, that was a tough. I was married at the time, so I really had a, a difficult time with that behavior because it was um, so conditional. I only did this, but I didn't do this. And for me personally, you kiss somebody, you cheated. I mean, that's just me. Like if I was married, I, it's that that's. I'm kind of anathema on that, but um, you know, so that's the really tough thing, though, is that you can choose your actions, but not the consequences. And so she she knew what she was doing, but it is all 100% on her. So there's there's a lot of facets to that for sure. Yeah, well, but, but she didn't put that in her mouth by herself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm she, she didn't put that one alone. Well. There's two people involved in that. Involved in that. It's, it's not like what happened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing that bothered me during that whole thing was that she didn't wash the damn dress. I'm like, that, that was really Stevie. freaky. You guys were that was so <laughs> You knew, you knew you had an ace in the hole. You're like, I'm gonna just put this dress in a bag. I know it's kind of weird and stuff. I'm gonna stick it in a bag over here and not do anything with it. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, was she that? was she that obsessive? You know, was she that in love with him, or was she actually kind of conniving and she did it on purpose? I, I think I it was know. conniving. I Who do. knows? Who knows? Uh, that's a tough one, though. Um, but, that's, but again, was again, I I really like Maggie brought it up earlier, and I really like Delilah's point. Is like, at what point do you have to share the responsibility and say? Uh, to me, the whole the whole take on that was that he got off. He got away with something. Like, he got off. Guys look at him. <laughs> guys look at him. They're like, that's my hero. Delilah. He's a cool dude, right? They did, and you know what? It, it was because he was such an enigmatic president. He, anybody who's he's, ever been in his presence, just said he's right. He did do really yes. well uh, from an uh, international yes. standpoint. He was, he was the, he was such a panacea at the time. But I do kind of hate it that that I hate it in any situation like that where it's somebody who just just takes the heat um, just simply based on on you know sports. It happens in sports. I mean, good yeah. God, think about some of these sports figures. Don't yeah. even get me started about the crap those guys get away with. And I mean, there's a lot of men, people who do a lot of great things, but right. because they're sports figures, there's a huge amount of leeway for them. Mm. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, okay, so in a I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta collapse my little soapbox. <laughs> I have to go soon. I have a collapsible uh, one I carry with me. I, I, I will give you all a more hometown version. And it, I actually want to know what y'all know about this. It, and it starts with a story a, a few years back. My husband bought this big F-150 truck, and this thing is like kicking. It's tuxedo black, gorgeous with the sparkles in it, and he had a few embellishments added onto it, and it's just like mean, tough with attitude looking. I mean, it is so mean, tough with attitude that the kids and I were giggling and decided to name this damn truck. And it's so full of attitude, we named the truck Hades. Which, if you ever looked at Greek mythology, that was the, Hades is the lord of the underworld. I even bought my husband, had him made a, uh, a tag to go on the front of his truck that says Hades. Well, he stuck it on there. And at the time, he worked for the Chattanooga Police Department, which is a fairly large department. Nobody cared. Most people didn't even know what it meant. So, no big thing. Well, a few months back, he quit the Chattanooga Police Department, and he started in a new police department in a small town. I mean, literally, it is 1.6 miles square, a 1.6 mile square city, but 80% of the richest people in the South live in this city. He actually went on a disorder the other day, a family disorder, because one of the families was down to their last $9 million. 
this is this is a consistent. Now you see me laughing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is very old money, very small town, old money. They've lived on this mountain their entire lives, and almost in inbred royalty status money, where he works at. The mayor and a few other people have come to the police department and have complained about the tag on the front of my husband's pickup truck because they think he is a devil worshiper. Stop. I am not joking. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am not wow. joking. Now, the, the police chief had to explain to the mayor that he could not ask my husband to remove this tag from yeah. the front of his truck. So, because they actually asked for that. They asked for this tag to be removed from the front of his truck. Yeah. So instead, they have asked my husband to park around the back of the police station, which is still impeding his civil liberties. Kind of is, yeah. Oh, yeah, it really is. So it's tough because he's... like asking somebody to move to the back of the bus because of the religious status. <laughs> right. <laughs> but here's the thing. My husband isn't a devil worshiper, but they're still asking him to park somewhere else. Yeah, and so it, he's tough. seriously under under a uh, possibility of getting fired because they think wow. that he is a devil worshiper. It's a really tough one, though, because, you you know, you do have that right, but it's like, the, do you give up? And by the way, did you hear the party foul that just happened because of, <laughs> oh. you know who? Bob just broke my glass. I know. He's in the call now because he's been jacked. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, so his, his little foot's bothering him, so he's in the, he's in cone detail. But did you not hear the glass break? Bob's <laughs> like, i got to get up here. And my wine is gone, and, and part, Bob gave a party foul, by the way. <laughs> I apologize for that. That's a uh, that's a tough one though because you you choose you choose your battles, but you're kind of like yeah, I shouldn't have to. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. It's not like the pussy wagon that was in Kill Bill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. What's so funny is uh, the other guys on the force are like standing up for him. Mm -hmm. They're all ordering um, stickers to go on their car windows, you know, like pentagrams. One of the guys ordered his state tag. He ha he's ordered a personalized state tag of the number 666. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I'd go that crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think that I'm would get some fuel to the fire there. Yeah. But, yeah. Hey, but I, like, I, I would do a I heart Hades, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just to lighten it up, like, you know. Not that we believe in that, but so these well, are his friends that are doing this to support your husband. Is that what I heard you say? And it's the other guys on the force. There's only okay. sixteen of them. I mean, what can she do? Fire them all sixteen at once? Yeah. Well, there's that. And then if you turn it back around the other way, would we do that for another woman? If something happened, it, it, you know, going back to the other thing, how many of us would stand up next to somebody that was going through this in a public ridicule way, knowing mm -hmm. that typically the responsibility falls on us? Seriously, I question. would. I would risk getting fired, but I've risked getting fired two or three times before. I've went through a couple of different lawsuits mm -hmm. for women's lib. Yeah, it's a tough I mean, one. No, you, know, you, you know, my my favorite quote is uh, uh, Martin Luther King when he's like, "It's it's something something effective. It's not known by the voice of your enemies, but the silence of your friends." Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. Anytime there's a thing, and ladies, I'm gonna have to go. Ahead. Oh, I, oh, I love it. I apply it so much to so many different things. I'm like, okay, yeah, the voice of the enemies, you know that. That's the evil you know, but it's the silence of your friends. And, you know, we all have to choose our paddle, battles. But um, we should, uh, you should look up this this whole thing about this this company called Black Milk out of the UK. Have you guys heard about this? Mm -hmm. Talk about, like, kind of sticking to your guns, but when, when you give it up. So Black Milk is very well known for being this this. Um, this clothing company that's supposed to be very uh, pro women, pro message, pro body, and they did this whole sexist thing where, and it was on Star Wars Day, but the irony is, is the post that they did was of Star Trek, and so there's that. And <laughs> me personally, you know how I feel about Star Wars. I'm like, please, please, please don't post Star Trek on Star Wars Day. Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there's your first mistake. Um, but but what it was, and I'll, I'll post the link for you guys, is that it was basically it said, here's what you think of when you see, you know, like. Uh, nerd nerd geeks and it was kind of a you know a beautiful hot geeky woman and then it was the girl from uh, oh the um, oh 
one of one of the one of the shows where the, the guys are all known as nerds, and I'm totally forgetting. And it really offended a lot of people, and they just would not back down. And it was you'll you'll have to go see it. It's a little mm -hmm. Schadenfreude because they they just they were so staunch about sticking to their message, and they were like, well, if you don't like us, unfriend us. And people were like, okay. <laughs> all right. You know, so it's. Um, it's, it, it, you know, I, I, I saw both sides of it because I get that way that I, I love my message and I love sticking to what it is, but they, they really just were not hearing. Can you guys hear this purring, by the way? Yes. Oh, that's, yes. Yeah. That's your, your boy right here. He's loving all his ladies. Um, but it was just interesting to see. So I'll post that link. It's called Black Milk, yeah. and it's a, a company out of the UK. But it was a, a really interesting study of... Um, like standing up for what you believe in or going too far and I, I totally get that with your husband because it's more like I'm sorry what, what there's bigger fish to fry <laughs> right I don't know if you know who Lynn Abate Johnson is she's in um, mm -hmm. uh, she's up in Napa but she had went to a, a city council meeting because people were incensed by a red door that was in in town and they they were just <laughs> losing their minds over a business that had a red door and there was like I mean you can't imagine the dollar amount of people discussing <laughs> where I was like that's just dumb that's just now you're just dumb yeah, yeah I, I want to say that like that would be awesome <laughs> yeah that one yeah that one I was definitely I mean, that's my whole thought is like don't y'all have something better to do then look at the tag exactly. on the frame stinking mm -hmm. truck yeah. you know they could all sell t-shirts I liked that Mia I heart Hades <laughs> <laughs> like a big smiley face, yeah, like little flames coming out of it and right. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the the police commissioner up there come up to my husband. And he's like, "Fuck the mayor." <laughs> That's oh. what he told him. He did. <laughs> Not literally, but I mean it. Right? <laughs> no, he literally told him that. He was like, "Fuck the mayor." <laughs> Oh, oh I no, you... no, not literally. I, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. <laughs> but, uh, okay. but back to the Monica Lewinsky Bill Clinton thing. <laughs> yeah, you could, you <laughs> thought we'd have it. No, apparently we hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nice. I have, Scott, actually, if we've got time for one last thing, I know we, we're about to finish, but Scott Scowcroft, who, shout out, so glad you here and everybody oh. else. Hey, um, Scott. He asked a question, which is, yes. what would happen were 50% of the legislatures, executive departments, and judiciaries of the world comprised of women? Do we think that this pressure to conform and this you know, whole you have to fit in and you can't go too far thing would change? Or do we think it would just be in the opposite direction? We'd be ogling all the boys, and uh, they'd be the ones who were in fear for their lives. <laughs> Figuratively, um. of course. Mm. Oh yeah, let's see this question. They're, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I, honestly, I think um, I think women are harder on each other than than the men ever were. Is what's so sad. Mm -hmm. I, I think we would police each other so mm -hmm. horrendously that it would be awful. I'd, I'd be interested to see what a matriarchal society would be like, though. But I'm isn't saying. it? Yeah, I think I think that part of the reason we police each other so so roughly is also because we think that we have to control mm -hmm. the access to the men, right? Like, you know, if you look at the mm -hmm. way it, you know, biology works, you got to find a man, right? Because that's where the money is and that's where the security is. And so mm -hmm. if you're policing other women, what are you really trying to do? Well, you're trying to make sure that they all don't do anything that's going to make them more attractive th than you mm -hmm. are, you know, biologically. That's what's going on. Well, you know, I, I, I have a, okay, I don't like to talk too much about this and I probably won't, but I, I have a political background. And I can tell you right now, I hated working with women. <laughs> I would, I would, I would much rather uh, talk to a, a political man for whatever reason. I, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's just too much in that whole conversation. It's yeah. tough, you know, Maggie. I've been in the construction world for 13 years, and then also, in fact, I have to run because I'm running a women's networking group, and it all has its balance. Because my famous line is that I've never met such a bitchy group of women than men in construction. <laughs> oh, those bitches can be. So I'm like, oh, you know, your balls may be big, but my ovaries are bigger. So 
<laughs> or your ovaries may be big, but mine are bigger. Um, but I'm, Maggie, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that to an extent. I, I, my, my biggest rant I always say, and which is why I'm very careful with this networking group I have here, is there's a lot of networking groups that use the word diva. And uh, it drives me nuts. I'm like, please don't tell me you're in business and you're going to add the word diva. That's just my personal rant of like, mm -hmm. just get, you know, and why does it even have to be, even with these women, I'm like, could you just tell me that you're a person in business who happens to be a woman? That's just me. So yeah. that's, yeah. My, that's my I'd, little I'd rather, I'd, rather, I'd rather stick to my food and my wine. <laughs> Listen, why, why do you think I have a show called Food and Booze with Chef now, right? Cause there you it's go. So, <laughs> it just, everybody loves food and booze. It's, it's such a, I love the word again, panacea. It's like this overarching thing that brings people together. It exactly. doesn't have a, a demographic per se. I have oh, hope it. for us as women, actually. I know why, Yay. you know, we have to be much, more, much, much more cutthroat or we feel like we have to be much, much more cutthroat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in higher profile mm -hmm. positions. And I think that inadvertently makes us harsher and harder to mm -hmm. be approachable and include other people, not mm -hmm. by choice, but by action or ha perception. And But I have a lot of hope for us. I have a lot of hope for us. I mean, look at you guys mm -hmm. right here. Every single one of you guys right here, strong, mm -hmm. powerful, sassy, amazing, knowledgeable yeah. women. And what the conversation this has been a conversation that I'm going to remember forever I have to agree with that wow that is, that. that is awesome Jessica yeah crap I should have allotted two hours for this show I know we should have to like continue this one this is this, awesome. this really is my one some of my favorite ladies on on Google Plus I have to say so D ditto on that ditto yeah on thank you guys so much it's always a pleasure to hang out with you guys I love, right, fest, I love a love fest, by the way. I love a love fest. I'm so sorry. I didn't get more comments and stuff in it, but I mean, there was just a whole lot going on. Mm. But I love you guys, and I get to see everybody. And now uh, it is 8 o'clock. I hope everybody enjoyed their time here on Happy Hour Hangout. Much a lot of in-depth conversation I was really going on. So <laughs> week after next, Thursday after next, I will see you again. Love you, darlings. Bye. Bye. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.